everyone, I'm out here with John Appel of Atlas Preservation. He is on his 48th state tour, and we are in Peoria, Illinois today uh, at the Old Stone Church in Limestone. Uh, John's had a chance to walk around the cemetery a little bit, check out the stones that we might work on today with the class. Thanks, Wade. Appreciate it. Um, here we are in uh, outside Peoria, Illinois, at this uh, beautiful historic uh, church site and uh, sloping hillside, green grass, but typical problems that we'll encounter, kind of monuments getting pushed down the hill, soiled by biological activity, and so we can make uh, great improvements here at the site today. That's awesome, John, thanks. Uh, so I'm gonna be out with John on a number of these dates, but awesome being out with John. We're excited for the class today. It's gonna be a great group, really looking forward to working on all these stones and uh, beautiful location, which is, which is amazing. So uh, thanks to John for being out with us and uh, thanks for having him having me out here. It's gonna be a great day. Thanks. Appreciate it. So here's a white marble monument. And um, we could just look at a number of different things. First of all, we're going to clean this one because it's going to clean really well. It's going to be very dramatic and it's a great example. Um, but the other thing I see is that this is really, really sunken. And when I'm looking at this lower base, this is actually an upper base. And there's another base under this, I could tell, like 99% sure. Because of the design of this, you wouldn't put a monument this big on this little marble base. And you generally wouldn't put marble into the ground or with rounded edges. So in other words, there's a whole nother base under that we can't see. It's, it's not leaning a lot, which is a really good thing, so it's not dangerous. So I'm not saying we have to, you know, re reset this. You could, and it would change the aesthetic and it would look really cool, but it's a big job because it's a heavy monument. Um, but obviously this is um, leaning badly. Now we also have a whole bunch of things going on here. And um, here's a tablet stone that is intact. We can't tell, you know, if it just fell over. Occasionally you'll be really lucky and one will fall over but not fracture. We can see a lot of erosion and kind of sugaring on the surface here. So it doesn't mean it's not fixable, but it means that it's not gonna be as good a repair. And here's a smaller stone, uh, another marble. There's a lot of gray marble here. And see, that's on another base, just like I was saying. That's why you hear that noise. Right here at the bottom, it has the monument company's name. Um, not sure if someone can read that. It says Peoria on it. And um, so monument uh, makers, would sometimes sign their work at the bottom, especially if they were proud of that, and they it was basically an advertisement. This is a great example, and one we're gonna work on um, after we do the cleaning, um, because someone shimmed this up um, somehow to keep it from falling, but you can see the anatomy of what happened here. First, the base very slowly lean, a uh, small marble monument, uh, probably for a child. Uh, so what we have here is a lower base that is a regional material. It is not a marble. I would say either a sandstone or a limestone. Now this looks fixable actually, because here's the other side of it. And these, 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 these holes right here are quarry marks. Um, they drilled in these holes when it was a bigger piece of stone into the quarry, and then they put plugs and feathers in, and they tapped it, and then it split the stone. That's how they worked the stone, okay? And don't crush your fingers. Um, and does it go this way? Yeah. And now there's another piece here that goes in here. This is the keyway, and that's what the stone fit into. Yeah. There you go. There it is. So that is actually repairable. Although if this is part of it, someone mucked it up with a lot of, mo some kind of concrete here, because none of this is original. So we're gonna actually start trying to level it. The elevation is not too bad now. Um, question, how high do we wanna go? No one answer to the question. It depends on how big the base is, depends on the uh, grade changes at the landscape. It depends on how much gravel we have at our disposal. In modern installations, usually 
only about an inch or two go in the ground and most of the base goes out of the ground. The next thing we're gonna have to do is clean the base and all the pieces to reconstruct it anyway. Now I'm gonna go just pack it in really as well as I can. The better the compaction, the longer this will last. So a lot of the time in the work is involved in two things, getting the bases elevated, level, regraded, and then prepped. So it's three and seven eighths, and so it's gotta go this way a little. Cut this off like this. Okay, so we're gonna put the spacers in. This will actually enable you to see the way we're setting it up better. We're gonna put this around the perimeter, just about that thick. Try to make it nice and equal. That's pretty good. Now we're gonna do this side to side motion to get it to drop down. Looks oh, yeah. like it's pretty much dead on. Um, this side, it's pretty close also. So you tend to get a bit of an optical illusion on a hill. Um, we'll check this side, it's also exceedingly close. Fortunately, the quality of their workmanship is equal to the quality of the concrete. It's poor quality in both regards. So they didn't use much Portland cement in it and that's why I'm able to chisel it so easily. They also did really messy work. But what we'll do is we'll prep it and go on and do something else while it's drying. So we'll get the mud off now. So there's still a little cement there. I'm just trying to get the bulk of it. And then we can lay it on here. Um, I know this is leaning pretty badly but we can, uh, we can fix that after. As long as they fit together, then we could repair it. Pretty sharp edge here for being underground. So that's a good thing. See, I told you it fit together. Um, we gotta do some excavation, raise the base, re-level it, dry fit it again, get it good, really clean up the surfaces, give it some time to dry, we can go on work on something else. I'm here with Father Harold today, uh, head of this church, and it's a, it's a really fantastic old church, and I wanted to just have him share with you a little bit about some of the people that helped found this area, this church, and the folks that are buried here. Uh, there's a lot of history here. I could try to summarize it uh, as best as possible. Pioneers started drifting from the east coast of New York, Ellis Island, the okay. famous Ellis Island, yeah, yeah. all the way down. Um, so, in this particular place, a group of Englishmen uh, settled in this location. Uh, two specific families, the Clarks and the Bensons, okay. were the pioneers who actually endeavored to build a church. Okay. Uh, so, thanks to them, we have this beautiful building that has stand the test of time for 175 years. So, up in the progress of this particular area of town, which is uh, kind of northeast Peoria, then more families started arriving as, as families continued to grow, then more people started to come to this church and being buried uh, at the same time, yeah. you know, just right next to the building where they worship. At its, at its peak, what was the congregation or the area that this church was serving? So it, it was more like a chapel. Okay. Um, most of its history might have had around 75 members at some given time, mm -hmm. uh, but it was always conceived as a chapel okay. from another parish which was uh, north of Peoria. Okay. Um, and that would be like a parent church of this Anglican chapel? Correct. Okay. Um, and uh, the bishop who actually founded this church, uh, 
has another cemetery which is called Jubilee uh, College mm -hmm. and it was a seminary that was built in the, from the Anglican Church to train priests to serve this area. Um, so out of that seminary came the first priest who happened to be a child when he settled here in this area. Ah, that's amazing. So, so uh, an original settler to the area becoming a priest. Became and... the first priest of Christ Church. Amazing. And is, he, and is he buried here as well? That is correct. It's right back here. Amazing. Amazing. Well, Father Hale, thank you for uh, inviting us out to the church and uh, being a terrific host today, showing us the grounds of the church. This is, it's a really beautiful area, folks. If you're, if you're ever in the Peoria, Illinois area, beautiful church, wonderful grounds, great people, great hosts. So thanks again for having us out. You're very welcome. Thank Delighted you. and blessed. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome.